Okay, so I'm going to talk about um, cross-check first and then move on and talk about um, cross-ref text and data mining. And I'll also move my cursor over. Um, my name is Rachel Lamy um, and I'm a product manager at Crossref and I'm based in our Oxford office. Um, to give you a quick update on um, the sort of highlights from Crosscheck over the, um, the last 12 months. Um, so Crosscheck, as, as Carol mentioned, is our sort of um, originality screening um, service. It's one of, um, it's the, I guess, the, one of the sort of older services that, that Crossref launched, which makes it, oh, about seven years old. So, so not that old in the grand scheme of things. Um, it's really started to, um, to grow at pace. Um, whenever I started just over two and a half years ago, we had around sort of 250 publishers participating in the service and um, providing their, their content to be indexed within, within the database. That's now grown to um, over, well, over 600 publishers. And the database itself, as such, has grown to, um, to include over 41 million um, documents. So journals, books, conference proceedings that have been, um, that have been indexed from those, um, the participating cross-check cross members. Um, one of the real um, areas of growth for the service um, that we've seen this year um, is the is in the documents that um, publishers are uploading to the system in order to check them for originality. Um, I'll not read out the figures themselves, but just to show um, since 2011, um, that's the, the annual usage, so the annual, annual number of documents that have been uploaded to be checked. Obviously, that comes from the fact that there are more members, so more people who have access to Authenticate to be able to screen documents. Integrations into manuscript tracking systems have helped because, again, people can integrate the checks more into their, their sort of standard, standard workflows. Um, and I think I'd probably attribute it to the growth of the database as well. The more content that's in there, the more useful a resource it becomes. Um, so we've got all this usage. How do we support it? Um, and that's something that's becoming more and more important. Um, We've got um, one of the things that's been launched um, in the last couple of months is um, this cross-check support site. I appreciate the text is quite small, so we'll, we'll share the slides afterwards. Um, but what this gives is basically a, a portal specific to cross-check users um, with things like FAQs that are specific to issues um, that, um, that users of cross-check as opposed to Authenticate or Turnitin might be having. Um, there are small um, webcasts and also some documentation um, as well, which we've put together with the, um, with the cross-check um, committee. To move on to that, um, just a couple of, um, a couple of things that, um, that Crossref has been trying to do, again, just to provide more resources and more information for people using, um, using the system and make sure that whenever they're reading the reports, they know what they're seeing and what they should be doing with that information. So around um, a year ago, um, in collaboration with Taylor and Francis, we did a little webinar on how to interpret the similarity reports. We brought up individual instances and um, and walk through those to show people some of the some of the issues that might prove pro problematic, but also some of the false positives that people might see. So text matching, for example, in a in a, mater in a materials and methods section, because set text was being used that's um, that's um, widely accepted in that subject area. Um, also, say something was published in a preprint server, and again. Um, and then the author has gone on to, to publish it in a journal. But what we've just done from that is we've spun out a guide, a couple of pages, which again just talks people through how to interpret the reports and how to look at different, um, different types of manuscripts. For example, you might want to interpret a review article in a different way to a, um, in a, different way to a, a research article. Um, and then just um, just last week, um, we'd had demand from people in the on the committee and via some surveys we've done to say, yeah, but we'd like something a bit more in depth and a bit more advanced. 
So we've done a, a cross-check admin webinar, which has some parts um, of a live demo from iParadigms, and then also um, just a bit more in-depth information in what's in the database as well. Um, so again, if um, we've asked people for feedback on the content within that, but what we'll also do is we'll start to offer those sort of every quarter so that people who do have more comprehensive knowledge of the system can just make sure that they're, um, that they're using the system in the best possible way. To move on to, um, to, move on to text and data mining, um, this is Crossref's newest service. Um, we talked about it at the, at the annual meeting last year whenever we were just sort of migrating the name from, from Prospect. Um, but we launched the service at the end of May um, and it basically, from the publisher side, it involves depositing full text links and license information with, with Crossref. Um, I'll explain a bit more um, about that. In terms, of, um, in terms of those full text links and license information um, that, um, that's needed for the service, um, we've seen over um, a million deposits from um, from publishers, and that will actually be topped up in the next couple of weeks um, by over 11 million deposits of that information um, from, from Elsevier. Um, we just need to update some information within the, the API in order to, to, pull in that, um, to pull in that data. Um, we've got a contact form, and we've had 17 publishers get in touch via it to let us know. It's a way just for us to track who's interested, who has questions, and when people are, are planning to start participating in the service with us or to deposit the metadata so that we can, so that we can help with, um, with that process. For example, um, yesterday I think um, Chuck and Patricia spoke about the fact that there's um, the option for publishers to upload a CSV file to our web, um, web deposit form in order to populate that kind of information into files as opposed to doing full redeposits. So um, there, there are things like that in place that, um, that should be helpful. Um, I know people will always ask um, about cost. This service is free to researchers and members of the public, um, and there's been no cost for publishers to participate through, um, through 2014. Just to talk, it's, um, I've got about a minute um, to talk about the steps. Um, if people are interested, Jeffrey did a really good um, presentation yesterday, which goes into this in a lot more detail than I have time to. But for those of you who aren't that familiar um, with the service as yet, um, it's really geared up to address these three steps in bold, um, that, um, those three parts of the text and data mining workflow. So researchers um, can use their sort of existing search tools, things like um, you know, Google Scholar, to identify the, the content they want to mine. We don't hold full text, so there's very, um, there's very little point in, um, in looking at us for that information. But when they've identified the corpus um, that they want, to, they want to mine, our service is geared towards returning the full text for that across a large number, um, a large number of publishers. Um, and that's, that's kind of the issue for people who want to text and data mine. We've got 4,000 publishers, a lot of whom are represented here today. And you, having a single point of, of access for that content um, is going to be, um, is really going to cut down some of the logistical hurdles that they face. Um, in terms of discovery, um, it's going to show them where the full text is located um, at the publisher. So that's why we need publishers to deposit full text links to the content in whatever forms you want. Some people are giving us links to XML and PDF, some to plain text. Um, that's, that's a choice that publishers can make. And then identifying the subset which can be accessed. So that's that license information. So saying, with the discovery, here's what it is, here's where it is, and the license information saying, here's what you can do with it. And then the researcher can go, and with that information, they can go and get the, the corpus of, of content. So how do they do that? Um, the, the cross, um, we've created an API, an application programming interface for text and data mining. And this is really the main aspect of the service. 
Um, basically, it's designed to allow researchers to easily access the full text across a large volume of publishers, regardless of their business model. Um, it also, um, because the license information is in there, it aims to sort of streamline the, the permissions process as well, instead of lots of individual transactions happening between researchers and publishers. Um, for more information on the API um, itself, um, there are links on our website for publishers and for researchers. And the researcher site, for those of you who were here um, yesterday, it gives a walkthrough of a couple of ways that researchers might um, employ the API to try to, um, to try to identify the content that they're interested in. Um, the entire workflow itself, um, some of you have seen this before, but it pulls together um, the publisher by virtue of what's deposited with us, the researcher who can identify that using um, the API, and then the, the actual, re the actual um, return of the full text itself, that sits with the publisher. So researchers are still coming to the publisher for content. So if you're, um, they would need to have subscription access if, um, to the content in order to, to bring it back. Or obviously if the content is open access or freely available, then they can just get it in that way. But the publisher controls that aspect of things. We're sort of working as, a, as an intermediary to try to facilitate that process. That's my 10 minutes up. Um, please come and find me if you've got more questions. And also there's more information um, from the main Crossref website as well. Thank you.